stops me and she says, Mike, you have, I feel like you have really dark spirits over you. Can I, can I pray for you? What's up everyone? Hope you guys are staying safe and sane inside your house. Just stuck stuck inside. Oh, me? Thanks for asking. I've been totally great. I've been sane. What have you been up to? That is so cool. I've just been in my house making TikToks. Don't you judge me. It's actually kind of fun. Whatever. Hey, it's Kristen and Bethany here with Girl Defined Ministries, and today's vlog is called Choosing to take modesty into your summer swimwear. I'll put a link below if you guys want to follow me. I've been posting like three or four videos there every single day because what else am I gonna do? Make YouTube videos? I should, I should probably actually be making YouTube videos. And speaking of making YouTube videos, I guess I should just, I should just start this one. And it's about this video I found on YouTube that's like a documentary on all these crazy conspiracy theories. And listen, if you're one of the people that love this documentary and you're super behind it and you just came to this to dislike it because I have a slightly different opinion than you, I suggest and encourage you to watch the entirety of this video because you will see I'm trying as hard as I can to be balanced, but you have to admit there are some flaws in this documentary and the whole thing is about being skeptical, so listen to at least that part of it and question even that. That's like a huge point in their thing, like question everything, but then they want you to believe everything in this. It's just... Anyway, this is something that I've had my eye on for a few weeks now. I... I feel very torn, and I'm just gonna start this video by letting you know my dilemma. The dilemma is that the documentary is, is real bad, but it does have some important aspects to it at the end. And it's difficult for me because the things at the end are so serious in nature that they talk about like pedophiles and uh, secret pedophilia rings in Hollywood and all of these things that are actually really serious and they bring up a lot of good points, some things I didn't know, some things I had seen before, but they, they water down the most important thing that they have to say with all of this conspiracy theory, religious bullshit. Which is so frustrating. Like, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. It's just, whenever there's something that you really believe in, but there's somebody next to you saying the same thing and they have a loud voice, but they're just representing the topic terribly, y you shouldn't align with that person. So as much as I was afraid to touch this topic because I don't want to diminish the importance of researching any potential danger to children, I do feel like the rest of the documentary does need a little bit of discussion. But let me tell you, this thing has a lot of support. If you haven't seen it, I will leave a link to it in the description. It's almost like an hour and 20 minutes long, so I pulled the clips of what I wanted to react to, the things that I felt I had commentary on. I did have to edit around to shorten it because I don't want this to be a five hour video. So if you wanna see everything and not just what I have chosen to comment on, I will leave a link to it in the description below. But uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. I've been watching too much Philip DeFranco. This thing is called Out of Shadows. It has been on YouTube since April 10th and currently has over 10 and a half million views and it continues to grow. The one thing that I did see that's very interesting is if you search Out of Shadows on YouTube, it's really hard to find and you would think a video that got that many views in that short of amount of time would be easy to find, but if you type in Out of Shadows, it's like very far down if you can even find it. It's difficult. I had to save the link so that I could continue to find this documentary. So that is, that is a little fishy. This documentary is a very serious conspiracy theory video, so I don't want to throw out any conspiracy theories, but that is weird. Speaking of conspiracy theories, did Carol Baskin kill her husband? I think she did. Oh, and by the way, there may or may not be a music video on David's channel where we sing one of Tiger King songs, so you can just go ahead and watch that if you want. <laughs> what else are you gonna do? Most of the things that we believe to be a fact in our lives are told to us through our stories or the news that we hear. All right, yeah, I mean, so far I agree. I was very much indoctrinated whenever I was growing up. I was brainwashed and it is not easy to undo that. Have you ever stopped for just a second though and questioned the content? Yes, I spent a lot of time doing that. Not only with religion, with a lot of things that I see because I'm used to people just lying to me. So it makes you very bitter. The only thing we consume more than content is air. I mean, is that true? Is that true? What if the people in charge didn't have our best interests in mind? Now we have to ask ourselves, who's influencing our content? Okay, 
So far, valid. No, I don't think anyone gives a shit. I think government is a very screwed up thing right now, uh, and has been. But uh, as far as entertainment, you know, I, I would not be surprised if there was influence there. What do you guys think? Leave a comment. But my issue with this is like, they over-dramatize it and they make it ridiculous. And it's like they're trying too hard to make a story sensationalized so people go, <gasps> you know, it's like Shane Dawson videos. They put the music in the background and people make shocked faces and then you have to kind of sit back and question like, okay, is this really as extreme as they're making it or are they trying to hype it up? Ooh, scary. I mean, come on, look at this. For real. Forgive me for not knowing exactly where this comes from, but I have heard and been told that the best lies are laced with truth. It is much easier to exaggerate a problem than to create one from nothing. So if there is, for example, government influence in media, then they're gonna take that and just totally turn it into this crazy thing, Illuminati celebrities are in like a weird satanic cult sacrificing animals. And if you think that's an exaggeration, keep watching this. I was a professional stunt performer. I've worked with some of the biggest stars. I've got to be Batman. I've got to be James Bond. I've won World Stunt Awards. The man you just saw is the main face that you see throughout this entire thing. He narrates a lot of it, he gives his opinion, he introduces a lot of these conspiracy theories to the audience, and he is a former stuntman who is a born-again Christian, and unfortunately he had an injury that made him, you know, unable to continue doing that as a job, and then he left Hollywood, and to me, it just seems like he became very bitter at that point and wanted to hate the industry. So he was almost looking for things to be mad about. Again, if you disagree, let me know in the comments. But he decided to go to therapy to work on the pain that he was having and had a very interesting uh, conversation with his physical therapist. So one day we're in the middle of therapy and she stops me and she says, Mike, you have, I feel like you have really dark spirits over you. Can I, can I pray for you? <sighs> So this is where shit starts to get a little weird. But for a moment, put yourself in his position and imagine going to a therapist, a physical therapist, you're trying to go see a medical professional and they're like, you know what, I think you have demons. You have demons around you. I would be out of there. I'd be like, okay, thanks, bye. And I was like, pray for me. I'm like, yeah, sure, pray for me. I, I, you know, I, I don't really believe in that stuff anymore, but yeah, go ahead, pray for me. Another I find interesting is that many, many, many times throughout this, it's like he's trying so hard to convince the audience that he didn't believe it. I was a skeptic all along. I never believed any of this. It sounded ridiculous. I thought she was crazy. It's like they really, really try, and I don't know if this is him doing it or the person who put this thing together really trying to communicate that he wasn't even a believer and then he had this crazy experience. Wow. Uh, it just seems like they're really, really, really trying too hard. So she prays for me. And I was kind of thinking while she's doing it, okay, this is weird, but uh, okay, whatever. So for the next two or three months, I would go, and then every now and then she would stop me and she'd say, hey, can I, can I pray over you? Outside of just trying to be nice to somebody, I can't see a situation where you would let someone pray for you or over you or talk about demons and your vibes and spirits and whatever. If you didn't believe in it, I would be uncomfortable. I was kind of little bit disgusted with his personality because he was all about himself and money and I think the Lord had a lot of work to do in terms of humility with him. I'm sure he did. He made it very clear that he thought I was crazy. Yes, and you're making it very, very clear to the audience. Thanks. We get it. We get it. He didn't believe it at first. Totally. You are either 100% batshit crazy or you think all this is real. I mean, can't both be true? Can't believing in things that don't exist and talking to invisible things and demons and stuff be crazy because they think it's real? She said, Michael, I am one of the only pelvic floor therapists in Southern California at the time. <laughs> oh, so I guess you're screwed, buddy. You have to stick with the, with the crazy one. And when these satanic people and these evil people do their rituals to little girls and women and boys, who do you think puts them back together? I said it got weird before, but this is this is next level. So she's talking about satanic people being terrible to children, and then they go to her and she fixes them 
But like, does she call the police? I just can't imagine having that kind of information and not just blasting it everywhere. Oh, but she couldn't. It's all controlled by the government. Okay. Who do you think puts them back together? I do. It's completely real and you need to look into it. So these children who are traumatized go to her and she prays for them? Checks on their demons? If you have a child that's been through something, send them to a therapist, not a pelvic floor therapist. My awakening, it didn't happen at church the way that some people find God. I just pretty much had given up my faith. I get it, you weren't spiritual. All right, let's move on. And I'd given up where I was at and I was just kind of at the point where I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna have the best time I can here and when I die, I die, that's it. Pretty much. I still wasn't sure if I if it was 100% crazy or not, but I was reading these articles and looking at these things and I was like, you know, I've seen things at parties, I've seen artwork. You went to parties and you saw art. I mean, my God, I, you know, I have family from Rome, so I grew up going to Rome a lot, and all of the religious paintings, almost all of them, also depicted some form of evil or Satan or demons or something like, you know, if you can see that kind of stuff at church and you don't think the church is evil, but then you see it at a party as art in someone's house and you're like, aha, come on. Statues, I've seen things in some people's houses that just seem to be mimicking occult stuff I'm reading about. So I was like, maybe there is something to this. If you walked through my house, you would think that I'm the leader of this crazy satanic cult. Actually, you know what? Let's go on a tour. All right, into the living room. Cat, cats are evil. Over here, I have the skull that I got from my witchcraft episode on Skeptic's Guide to Wellness. This was a gift that David got me when we first started dating. It's got a love spell on it. Y'all get the hint, okay? Some people just like the creepy aesthetic. Do I think that Satan is real? No, I, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. I also don't believe in Satan. So it's just, I don't know, I think it's cute. Okay, wasn't that fun? A nice fun tour of my house. I don't worship the devil, okay? And I'm sure if you checked out my social media, you would find some things that make them go, aha. But you know, sometimes people are just a little weird. Hi, I'm weird. Do I believe in Satan? No. Do I sacrifice animals? No, I love animals. If I could have a million cats, I totally would. I love them all. Or maybe I'm just saying all of this to throw you guys off because I, as I joked about before, am the leader of the Illuminati. There actually have been videos people have made about me trying to like prove that I'm in the Illuminati. They're great. Anyways, back to this. He didn't find God because he went to church. He went to a party and saw some art. Okay, there we go. I found God because I realized that the Luciferian and the other side, the occult world was real and that I had been fooled for all these years. So after he's out of the business entirely is whenever he comes to all of these conclusions. He had to look back on different memories to somehow confirmation bias his way into believing this conspiracy theory that Hollywood is run by the devil or something. I got really scared because this was the first time in my life that I was having to question my own reality. Physically, I was crushed. I wasn't gonna be who I was. It's kind of sad if that's actually the first time you ever questioned what was going on around you. And like, listen, I don't wanna be judgmental because I'm sure that going through that kind of an injury, especially one that leads to you being unable to do your job that he's probably passionate about, you know, that kind of thing would mess you up mentally. So I don't wanna be judgmental for any struggle that he may be going through, but I do think that it is relevant whenever it comes to him claiming all of these like conspiracy theories and crazy things and all of these memories that now he's putting together. It's just something to consider. So I first, I got off of social media and I made an anonymous account. I started reading blogs, looking at articles, I started reading books, I started watching videos online. I mean, if you dig for anything on the internet, you'll find it. If you decide to get super into Bigfoot, you could probably find a decent amount of information that anybody could post on the internet that would confirm your idea of what's going on. I just started searching for the truth and I was finding accounts that were searching for the truth themselves. It's not hard to go online and find accounts of people who think that there are monsters under their bed and they have like 
accounts that they post on it. Like, what? Is this supposed to make me feel like it's legit research? I didn't believe I was getting the truth from CNN, MSNBC, Fox. I didn't believe any of them. I just wanted to read it, absorb it, and digest it, and trust what my gut told me I was reading. So this is what I'm talking about, that... It, if you lace it with a little bit of truth, it's that much more believable. Yeah, I also question the media, especially with politics. I do think that the news is very persuaded by things, but that doesn't mean that Joe Schmo on the internet talking about leprechauns has actual validity. It's so confusing to me whenever this guy and like a lot of people in this video, they're all so pushy with the idea of being skeptical, right? Question everything, be skeptical, but not these accounts online that fit nicely within my confirmation bias agenda. I'm not gonna question those, and everybody watching this documentary, don't question this documentary either, but be skeptical of everything else. As I did my research, I began to understand there's a very small group of people that influence all the companies that we watch. Okay, I don't disagree with that. And in the 40s, they were telling you they controlled the radio stations. They controlled most of the mainstream media. They're telling you right here that motion pictures are used as psychological warfare. Why would they stop doing it? Control is a word that you can use kind of loosely. Like, yeah, I don't think that if you're CNN, you can just go on and any reporter can give any personal opinion that isn't something that has been approved. And I've seen a lot of different things where reporters on different news stations are literally saying the same thing verbatim. So again, do I disagree with this? No. Do they take it to a ridiculous point? Yeah, you'll see. Oh, look at that. They show the clip, the clip that I was talking about of all the different news people here. L look at it. Creepy, right? Actually, yeah, it's a little worrisome. So I am not completely saying that it's all bullshit, but we're going to dive into a big pile of bullshit right now. CIA is funneling information in to Hollywood. Hollywood is putting out, out in the movies and the population believes it. Did I just see a clip of Zoolander? The movie that I did involving that topic was Zoolander. The fashion industry has been behind every major political assassination over the last 200 years. I mean, at the time, I, I was making a comedy and I had no idea what I was involved with. The fashion industry! No! Say it ain't so! When they're showing you that they're controlling Derek Zoolander's mind through mind control, you realize that they're trying to desensitize you and to make you think that what you're watching is fiction because it's in a comedy. So the government, the government was in on Zoolander and they wanted the plot to contain mind control so that everybody watching Zoolander would one day, if they really realized they were being mind controlled, not care because, oh, I saw it in Zoolander. All right, so look, here's the deal. They have been desensitizing us since we were born. And I'll give you some examples. Let's start with the big one. Let's start with words we hear all the time and never even think about. Let's start with the word entertainment. All right, if you guys have a pad and paper nearby, get it out. Let's just start with the word entertainment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 letters in the word entertainment. Now, Friday the 13th is an unlucky day. Therefore, Satan influences negative things to happen in the world on Friday the 13th. Entertainment is also run by Satan, 13. To entertain, what does that mean? To bind or hold, to bind or hold what? An audience's attention. Okay, now let's take the word Hollywood. Where does that come from? Well, Hollywood comes from the holly tree. What the, what the fuck is the point of this? They're putting this creepy music behind like dumb points to try and freak people out while they're talking about manipulation and mind control. Irony. And the ancient Druids back in the day used to take the holly tree, make wands to weave spells, cast spells, or channel spells. Okay. Oh my God. So Hollywood, the holly tree, um, spells. Hollywood is about spells. How did I not see it before? I've lived here for so long and I never thought about the spell making. 
And when they needed help, they would consult the magis or the mediums of the day to help channel their spells to the population. We'll cut to today. What do we have in our houses? We have these black boxes. Oh my God, we're gonna talk about how TVs, it all makes sense. Television, TVs are channeling spells to the population. So when you watch Zoolander or anything else on your black box, you're getting spells cast upon you. But if you stop and you say the word, tell a vision, television. And when you turn on that television, what do you get? What's the first thing that pops up? A list of channels. Channels. Oh my God. Oh my God, I can't watch this anymore. And when you turn on those channels, what's on those channels? The following program Programming. All those years my grandma was calling her soap operas programs. That's what it meant. They are programming you. They've been programming your whole life. You don't even know it. They do it with your music. They do it with your TV. They do it with your movies. They do it with your games. I knew video games caused violence. They're programming kids to be violent through video games. We're talking about one stupid thing. Let's just talk about another. They have been programming us and programming you since you were little and you don't even know it because you don't even question. I mean, can't, can't religion be a huge part of that? You spend so much time in this telling everybody about demons and God and, and all of these things that children are taught from such a young age. And here I was sitting down thinking that that was the bad problem, but the cartoons they're watching in the morning, that is the culprit. It's those damn video games. We as this population like to hear people confirm our confirmation biases. We like to hear people tell us that we're right. We don't like to be wrong. That sums up this entire documentary about you. I literally used the term confirmation bias earlier about this guy. And then he says this, I'm just, am, am I the only one seeing the just mass amounts of irony and hypocrisy in this? So if you stop and think about it, they can place any agenda on the population that they choose. Lucifer. They stop on Lucifer. It's actually a pretty good show. He says that so many times. If you just think about it, if you stop and think about it, just think more. Use your brain like me. I think that Hollywood is teaching bad morals to the youth of this country as well as adults. Desensitizing of violence to the masses. You can't deny that. My kids have seen so many people get killed in very violent ways. You know what's funny? Earlier in this, they showed uh, an image of a movie, Passion of the Christ. They showed like Jesus on the cross, all bloody. That, I remember watching that in Catholic school growing up. That shit was the most violent thing I've ever seen ever on TV. And you know what? We were told that that was real. But here we have a stunt man who literally his job was to create the illusion behind movies of violent scenes exactly like this. But people know that. People know what a stunt man is. People know that movies are just movies. But with religion, you're taught that it's real and hell is real and demons and Satan. I just, God, it's so fucking hypocritical. Especially with sexual abuse or sexual trauma, you will split their personality and they will be imprinted the rest of their life. And many times that results in split personalities and disassociative behavior and other things. Okay, so we're talking about trauma, which that can legitimately cause long-term psychological damage, but the entirety of that clip had images over it of these, ugh, I, I'm sure you guys have seen it before where they find like something that looks sexual in a Disney image and everybody freaks out over it. But like some of this stuff has been proven to not be true. Like they show this image from Monsters, Inc. Again, great movie. And look, li listen, this picture is totally messed up. Definitely something that you would not want to have in a children's movie. And the good thing about that is that it wasn't. Quick Google search can fix a lot of these things. The drawing did not actually appear in the movie at all. 
It was apparently some part of a contest where users are asked to insert R-rated Easter eggs into children's movies. The above displayed image was later inserted into a clip from Monsters, Inc., which had many people convinced that it was real. While Disney and Pixar both love to insert Easter eggs, intentional hidden messages, or inside jokes into their films, this is not an example of one. The real scene from Monsters, Inc. featured an innocent picture of a cat. Here's what it actually was, guys. Don't worry. These occult topics are being introduced to our kids and most parents aren't even aware of it. I mean, yeah, there's like witches and things in Disney movies. There's like an evil character in every Disney movie. Like, we're the ugh. And then they go through and talk about all these horror movies that apparently send you straight to hell, like The Exorcist and they're just uh, Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, all these movies that are great, by the way. But you know, it's, it's the work of Satan. This same time period, it parallels the rise of the Church of Satan in Los Angeles, and it was founded by a guy named Anton LaVey. So I'm going to be honest and say that I do not have a wealth of knowledge on the topic of Satanism. There are other YouTubers out there that either do or are Satanists themselves, and I encourage them to respond to this part of the documentary. All I will say is that anybody I've ever met that said that they were a Satanist has been really sweet and they talk about the Satanic Bible and say how it's almost like a motivational self-help type of thing and they don't even believe the devil is actually real. Those are the conversations that I've had. I know people think that I'm a Satanist. Don't know why. <laughs> it's funny because I spend so much of my energy on the internet talking about how you should not believe in supernatural things because it's dumb and then they're like, oh, you're only saying that because you want to worship Satan. Uh, successfully because he had a good attorney, despite the fact that there were multiple witnesses that said Aquino, it, through satanic rituals, had abused them as children. There's no question that he's a practicing Satanist. Just watch any one of his interviews. Are we just going to ignore the church and all of the pedophile priests out there and all of the corruption that goes along with especially Catholicism? Are we going to say now that like, the devil is working through Catholicism? Uh, that, it's just very frustrating to me. This feels so much like a piece of Christian propaganda. It's not even funny. They're trying so hard to scare people watching. So hard. And again, I do find it ironic that people who are so afraid of the devil do everything in their power to demonize people who either don't believe in God or are identifying as a Satanist. If you don't like demons, stop that demonizing. It's pretty simple if you think about it. If you just think about it, it's pretty easy. Anybody could think about it. To control the population, you have to control the people messaging the population. Some of these stars have 20, 30 million followers. That's more followers than CNN. Are we trying to say now that Katy Perry and Taylor Swift are in alliance with the devil? Is that what we're is that what we're saying now? Fox, ABC, NBC, these people have to be controlled. They can't just go off a message and start saying whatever they want to say. They have to be somewhat reined in. Okay, so he's saying that anybody with that much influence because they're super famous, needs to be monitored, essentially, by some group of people, some elite group of possibly Illuminati-esque people. Um, imagine anybody who gets famous. You, you can get famous organically. They make this seem like in order to get famous, you have to pass some kind of admissions test from this elite group of people, but Anybody can get famous for any stupid thing. Like, this is the internet. We know that by now. They have to be controlled, or they do not get the platform to have the voice that they have. Ariana Grande, okay, she's also a part of, uh, I wonder if they would consider 800,000 subscribers enough to think that I would need monitoring by the government. Oh, I bet they're already gonna say that. I bet they're all gonna say, here's another example of someone who has to be monitored, even though like I am like nothing compared to the people they're bringing up. At what point is someone's influence enough to be monitored by the Illuminati? And how many more people are gonna think that I'm a part of it because of this video? Can't wait. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. George Carlin, you're gonna use George Carlin. You know he was a pretty big atheist, right? But you're not gonna put the clips of him bashing religion in this documentary. Nope, because this is promoting Christianity. And the only person that was talking about this stuff 
was a girl named Liz Crokin, and the media had declared her completely out of her mind. Now, remember when I said at the beginning of this video that they talked about pedophile rings and all of these crazy things that are going on? They talk about Pizzagate, uh, they talk about Epstein, they talk about cases like from Allison Mack. I remember seeing her on the news and she went to jail, and I remember thinking that was crazy because I used to watch Smallville. But what's important about this, to me at least, is that this documentary, like I said, it's almost it's almost an hour and 20 minutes long. They don't get into this topic until right here, 52 minutes. And they talk about this woman, Lisa, who apparently tried to break the story a long time ago, but was written off as a crazy person. I will say that there are a lot of things that I find very interesting in this part of it. And this part of it is something that I feel like they buried. Why? Why isn't that the first thing you talk about? Why are we talking about demons and physical therapists praying for you and Monsters, Inc. when we can be talking about something that actually matters? Investigating something as serious as this should not be conflated in any way with conspiracy theorist bullshit crap like this documentary does. It is unfair to the cause and it's it just is so frustrating to me. And if people who love this documentary are still watching, think about this. I'm gonna mind fuck with you a second. If this documentary makes the general public take pedophilia less seriously, because it teaches people to equate that topic with crazy conspiracy theorists, don't you think that the media or the government or whoever's in control that is supposedly doing all this stuff, they would want people to not take it seriously? So maybe they made this on purpose to throw everyone off? See, now you're thinking. You are only allowed a certain level of success if you are willing to join their club, if you're willing to be part of their secret society. Oh, okay, well, they didn't talk about it for very long before getting right back into this bullshit. We see the evil one eye constantly. It's always on the cover of magazines. We see these are supposed to be the 666 devil symbols. We constantly see those symbols. Do you see what I'm saying? How they're really trying to stretch things and some of these things like the Monsters Inc. thing, if you look into it, it's not even real. These are just photos of people. My hair falls into my face all the time. Do you know how many people have accused me because of this, of that one eye thing? People have literally taken pictures of me wearing anything that they can draw a triangle in and been like, see? Evidence. <laughs> but anyway. And then later they show him just looking into the peanut butter jar like he would see something if it were there because apparently now he's developed some kind of microscope. And then the whole thing ends with this message. So are we not supposed to listen to this entire thing because you were telling us what's going on? Is this your like disclaimer that all of it wasn't true because the truth is never told, it's only learned? Do you not see how that could play against everything you just said right before putting this up there? So when I first became aware of this, I went through and I screenshotted some of the comments that I saw. I thought I was just gonna wanna grab a few, but I ended up grabbing quite a bit because they were so ridiculous and I wanted to do this also to give you guys an idea of the type of person that we're dealing with. I'm sure if you scroll through my comment section, anybody who finds this video who dislikes the message that I'm propagating, they're gonna say the same kind of crazy shit, so keep an eye out for them. It's actually pretty entertaining. You failed to name the Jews. So, yep, they didn't They didn't do that. They went the whole documentary without blaming the Jews. Pray as you watch. Oops, forgot to do that. Repent, Katy Perry, before your baby is born. His or her innocence has somewhat been taken already, but you have time to turn to God. Shame if you don't. I'm sure Katy Perry saw that. Lots of Bible quotes. We need to start a civil war revolution. Destroy 5G, okay. Satan sure knows how to use these people and we just follow them, but maybe some of us will wake up. Kill the media. All the thumbs down are Satanists. This is the great awakening. Oh, cool. A link to shapeshifters, Masonic secrets and symbols. Oh wow, a good comment. I say, I remember 
got so excited when I screenshotted this because it was the only good comment. Religion doesn't have to be mixed into the shit show of a film. It really shows your bias. Ain't that the truth. It's the Jews. An another Jew comment. Conspiracy theorist equals critical thinker slash rational thinker. I'm so excited this video has 4.4 million views. It's happening. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Coronavirus equals distraction. Okay. So yeah, that's the caliber of comments on this thing. I find it entertaining to talk about any kind of crazy shit I see on the internet, you know, whether it be a preacher or flat earthers or people like this. I, I am not going to ignore something as ridiculous as that. I was cringing watching so much of it and then I felt like my heart kind of sink when they actually got into something that mattered, but it was surrounded with all this dumb shit that's gonna make no one take it seriously. And you know what I just realized? I said entertaining just now, and that's from the word entertainment that has 13 letters, so now this video is cursed, and anybody watching, I'm really sorry, you're gonna have like seven years bad luck or something with the devil. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know if you watched it. If you didn't watch it, like I said at the beginning of this, I also want to know, did Carol Baskin kill her husband? We're all just really, that's all we care about. Also, I'm kind of looking forward to the videos people are going to make about me trying to prove in some way that I am a Satanist or part of this circle of people, Illuminati, whatever. Uh, bring it on. It's more content for videos in the future. I can't wait. As usual, make sure you go to ffvmerch.com and check out what I've got on there. I've got some satanic cats. You know, satanic cats on sweatshirts, red sweatshirts, black sweatshirts, satanic cats on tank tops, satanic cats on t-shirts, satanic cats on underwear. That's where the real shit happens. <laughs> Get it? Also have shot glasses that you can put alcohol in, which is satanic. Also the blood of your enemies can also fit in those little shot glasses. Posters that we can sign, and I'm sure there's some other devil shit on there I'm forgetting about. But yeah, check it out, ffvmerch.com. Thank you to all of you out there supporting my very evil satanic apparently work on the internet at patreon.com slash Jacqueline. Very much appreciated since everything gets demonetized. Betcha this will, YouTube does not like conspiracy theories. And also me, they don't, they don't like me. And thank you to everybody who's just tuning in and watching my videos regularly. It really does help quite a bit. Give it a thumbs up, helps my video in the algorithm. Leave a comment, helps my video in the algorithm. Also, I'm really curious to see what you guys think. And if you wanna keep up with me on other social media, I post a lot on Instagram, Twitter, and recently, TikTok. I'm obsessed with TikTok, so hopefully you follow me over there. And uh, yeah, until next time, hail Satan. All right, bye.